Well, let's find out now because we've established contact uh, uh, with Phil call. Kirpin, president of American Commitment and chairman of the Internet Freedom Coalition. Hey, Phil, we were worried that somebody had slowed down your transmission, <laughs> uh, but we're pleased to have you here on our program today. Got, yeah, absolutely. So what is your biggest fear uh, coming out of so-called net neutrality? Well, I think that this is a um, solution in search of a problem that itself now, isn't that interesting? Hmm. Phil starts to commercial answer. Internet. There we go. We're the ahead. history of the commercial Internet is only about 20 years old. It really was kicked off into high gear with the 1996 Telecom Act. And what that act did that was so wonderful is it created this deregulated environment where the bureaucrats in Washington had their hands off. And we've had commercial development in particular. We've had this tremendous competition between phone and cable companies to deploy ever better and faster broadband internet. It's enabled a lot of remarkable technologies and innovation. It's really served everyone very, very well. And uh, now you've got some groups that want to say it shouldn't be that way anymore. It shouldn't be a competitive marketplace uh, where people can innovate and so forth and decide what business models make sense. Instead, we should go back to a mother may I type regime with 1930 style public utility regulation where any business you want to offer, any service you want to offer, you've got to get approval from the bureaucrats at the FCC first to file your rates, uh, be micromanaged in every aspect of your business. And I think if we go down that path, we're going to get a lot less innovation, a lot less growth, a lot less private investment. We're going to be forced as taxpayers probably uh, to put in taxpayer dollars to make up for the lack of private investment. And we're going to see a lot less innovation and a lot less uh, sort of the uh, the Internet is the engine of economic growth and creativity that's been in the absence of regulation for the past 20 years or so. So we were talking a little bit about this um the web companies and what they're trying to do now. How do you think this change will affect the companies and their customers if it does go through? Well, I think the, uh, you know, it depends on how severe uh, the final rule actually is, how difficult it is for companies to continue to innovate and try different business models and so forth. But uh, if they do need to go to the FCC for prior approval for pretty much anything uh, that they do, uh, you're going to see a lot less innovation, a lot less investment, and so forth. And, you know, for instance, in the mobile space, one of the things that could be outright prohibited by a rule like this is kind of the toll-free data plan that some of the uh, mobile providers are negotiating with some of the big video content companies like ESPN. And this is going to become a major issue going forward because uh, as people consume a lot more video on their mobile devices, they're going to blow through their bandwidth allocation that they pay for in their data plan pretty quickly mm -hmm. and get huge overage charges if there's not a market mechanism in place where some of these big video providers can say, we're going to pay for that and make the money in advertising uh, so the end user doesn't have to. And so if you have a regulatory model that basically says the only payment model that will allow is for the end customer to pay for everything, uh, people could be looking at very high bills and there could be some major practical problems there. So I think this is the sort of thing where you're really better off having the market sort out who ought to pay what and see what business models work and don't work instead of just ruling things out uh, by having regulators step in, which can have some very bad unintended consequences. Uh, Phil, a couple of minutes remain, and there are a couple of other issues we want to talk with you about, specifically mergers, mega media mergers. For example, the proposed merging of Comcast and Time Warner. Now, media watchdog group groups around the country have been disputing this possible merger, saying that it would create some problems by eliminating competition. What are your thoughts on that, and do you think this merger will actually happen? Uh, I don't think that this merger is anti-competitive because there really aren't any markets anywhere in the country where Comcast and Time Warner compete with each other. If you look at their footprints, uh, it's a very horizontal merger. There's very little programming that's being acquired. Comcast did acquire a lot of programming in the NBC uh, Universal uh, merger, which potentially uh, could have raised some vertical integration issues, but that ultimately did pass muster. And so this is really more of a horizontal merger. Uh, nobody is losing choices because nobody's in a place right now where they can choose between Comcast and Time Warner. So there's no reduction uh, in cable TV choices from an end consumer perspective. And the bigger problem driving costs right now in video programming is the content companies have an awful lot of leverage to force their fees higher and higher, which gets passed through to customers and their bills, uh, in particular uh, sports content and live content, uh, live premium content. Uh, and so I think actually having a larger sort of 
force on the distribution side could actually put some downward pressure on prices by giving them more negotiating power with the content guys who've really been sort of naming their price lately. And so if anything, I think we could see some modest downward pressure on prices as a result of this merger. And so uh, from my perspective, I don't have uh, an anti-competitive issue with the merger. I would approve it. Uh, whether that will actually happen, who knows? Uh, mergers are very complex, as you know. But I, I will say that the, the major corporate opponent of this merger, which was Charter Communications, who wanted to buy Time Warner themselves, uh, they've now sort of reached a side deal where they're going to be certain systems that are divested to them, and so they're no longer opposing it. And so from sort of a practical kind of lobbying perspective, uh, I think handicapping it, it looks more likely than not that it will be. All right, Phil Kirpin, we appreciate your insights on net neutrality and possible mega media mergers. We look forward to visiting with you again. What's your take at home on this? Why don't you tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum, and we're coming right back.